And is part of that also about helping manage um, the deployment and uh, configuration of the system or the systems that they that they have in, in production? Uh, yes, that, that, that's an el important element from uh, the customers we've talked to uh, who have large enterprises. So we talk to people who may have, you know, 10,000 uh, desktops, 100,000 desktops even, or 10,000 servers within their labs across the, their global enterprise. And what they're looking at is how can they better manage the deployment of, of Java? How can they better understand within their enterprise at what levels is, uh, the programs they have? And how can they understand how to bring uh, the levels of Java up to the most appropriate uh, um, latest versions of Java? in as uh, straightforward way as possible. And I think that, in fact, is um, where we've been working with Kevin on understanding how we can get some more integration between Java and some of the products that uh, new offerings that are coming out of uh, the Sun Connection services. Oh, fantastic. So yeah, I did want to touch on uh, some of the new, uh, uh, you know, really exciting services coming from Sun. Uh, we've launched a, uh, a company-wide program uh, to allow our customers to electronically register uh, virtually all of the products that they receive from Sun, whether it's hardware, whether it's operating systems, uh, individual pieces of software. Um, all of these products uh, will be electronically registrable. And they'll also be, uh, uh, you'll be able to sort of uh, bulk discover those on your network, and this is particularly important for a large IT environment, that um, the, the more and more we enable this uh, automatic discovery, uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, run an agent to discover all of the different products that are running within a subnet. Uh, you'll be able to register those, and as people throughout your organization register those products, you'll get a very uh, high-level view of all the different versions, for instance, of products that may be running. So in Java's case, you may see you know, which departments are running a, partic a particular version, uh, departments that are running a different particular version. Uh, and once that's registered, that then becomes the communication conduit so that we can communicate with all the folks that are registered against those products that need to find the updates and the information, uh, whether it's a warranty status on a piece of hardware uh, or the uh, update schedule of a piece of software, what updates are available, uh, et cetera. Right. That actually subscribe to all those things through an RSS reader, have that delivered, specified, personalized uh, to their environment. Okay. So they'll actually then be able to get information about what they're using and have that leverage to get information about things like these advanced notifications and the synchronized fixes tailored directly for what they're using in their environment. Does that sound? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, you know, you'll find that a lot of that process really is manual. Somebody has a spreadsheet of you know right. which applications are running with you know which JREs running on which platforms. Uh, and you know the the guy with the spreadsheet you know gets lost and you know, <laughs> and so you start running around trying to figure it out again. Uh, so really, this is automating uh, you know what becomes a, a big part of that IT uh, you know hassle, um, and then uh, you know, being proactive and not having to go search for information, but actually having right. it delivered to you in the way that you expect to see it. Right, and we certainly saw that when we were working with enterprises around the uh, change in the daylight savings that happened in the <laughs> U.S. Um, earlier this year, and I think um, a number of companies found that they were had Java um, on basically every machine, some of which they were using, some of which they weren't, and it, it, I think it led to a number to the realization that they needed uh, a better way to, to manage uh, this sort of infrastructure for for them. Yep, and this you know by no means is meant to be a uh, uh, you know an asset management tool enterprise wide, but really just that that customized view of being able to roll up all those assets from Sun, uh, and then you can certainly uh, uh, export uh, all of this data into whatever other corporate management systems that you may have. Right. So it, it provides a way in which you can find uh, the assets and the and list them out on on uh, their site. How yep. how's that? Happen. Sure, we can show that. So I'll just do a, a quick demo of uh, what Sun Connection can do today. So today we have uh, 
uh, service tags enabled in uh, Solaris 10 Update 4, mm -hmm. and we have service tags uh, available for download and application to Solaris 8, 9, and 10. That allows you to discover all those instances of Solaris and all the underlying uh, hardware uh, that you have in your infrastructure. Uh, there's a number of other products uh, coming online throughout the next uh, few quarters, uh, like Java SE, uh, that will uh, uh, allow you to also use the same tools to, again, uh, bulk register and, and provide that information. Uh, so up on the screen here, you see that it really is three easy steps. Uh, the first, if you don't already have, uh, for instance, Solaris Update 4 as it's a new release, uh, the ability to download packages uh, for Solaris 8, 9, and 10, apply those to your systems. Uh, you'll notice there's a Discover Now. Uh, this brings up a Java Web Start tool. Mm -hmm. uh, you point it at a subnet. It uh, instantly um, discovers uh, all of those uh, tagged assets, uh, uh, and a bunch of information is then um, uh, presented to you. Uh, and then completely offline, you can take that report that's generated and then choose to register that uh, with Sun Microsystems. And when you do that, you'll then get to go to the Sun Connection inventory channel, and this channel allows you to both uh, uh, really collect, to organize, and then build reports uh, based on all the different assets in your environment. Uh, anything from, again, uh, you know, Solaris to, uh, to uh, various uh, hardware machines, uh, underlying uh, uh, software, see those relationships. Right. And then a number of tools to uh, group them uh, by, for instance, department or by technology. You know, however you organize and need to build those reports, uh, you can do all of that within the tool. Uh, and then you'll find that next to the individual assets, there'll be a little RSS tag. You can click that, subscribe to it, uh, and then it, we will deliver whatever information gets posted against any of those uh, uh, those right. assets directly uh, into your email box. Right. So basically, the Java Web Start application uh, discovers within your network the various software applications and I assume hardware that you have. Yep. You get to review that, understand which subset of that you would like to be uh, informed about, register it with the tool, and then you will get information about uh, changes to the firmware or the you know with Java updates that are relevant to that configuration. Right. Okay. Absolutely. And again, our goal is uh, is really to touch you know any one that that has some responsibility or touches different machines in whatever way they can all register you can register the same machines again and again and that just provides more and more visibility for the folks that need to know what's going on in the right. environment and you you mentioned Solaris are you looking at other OS's over time uh, absolutely uh, for both you know Red Hat SUSE uh, Windows mm. uh, you know, particularly against uh, you know a lot of our hardware platforms uh, we also uh, embed the service tags into the service processors of many of our new systems, uh, so that just as soon as you attach, you know, a bare metal system, uh, you know, onto the network, you'll be able to discover those and register as well. Okay, so if uh, customers are starting to buy some of the new, nice new uh, uh, Intel boxes that we produced and run Linux or Windows, they will get the the same. Absolutely. Okay, good. So, so, let's... Bill, is there anything else uh, we haven't covered today? No, you know, I, I think from the, the advances that we're making in the platform um, starting um, these days, I think we've hit on them. The advanced notification is brand new for the, for the Java SE platform. It's available on the Sun Security blog uh, that we'll have pointers to on the website here. Um, and the synchronized fixes will be available to folks available through their traditional channels, java.com, java.sun.com. The big change there being, of course, that now um, people will be able to get the same critical fixes at the same time, whether they're using the 6, 5, or 142 versions of the platform. Um, and, and that's uh, really the, the great news um, in terms of what we're doing today, plus the stuff we've got planned for the future. I think um, I, I really appreciate the chance to, to talk with you guys about it and share it with the audience here today. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, and uh, Bill, one follow-up item there. It's worth noting that you know part of that synchronization will be getting the fixes out into the open source repositories, so that uh, again we get as broad a exposure as possible to to those critical fixes. Yep, and register your systems today uh, and continue to run the uh, discovery tool, and you'll find more and more products over time. Okay, good. Thank Great. you. Thanks.